And hello there, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages. My name is Dogbot333, and welcome to Harchvine 4, the New Order Last Days of Europe. Toolbox! Motherfucking Theory. That's right, version 1.2.0 is out. Um, I don't know if I... I was hoping this day would come. I didn't think it would actually come. Um, but here we are. Um... I think I was joking. I I I asked uh, people in my Discord what's dropping first: uh, a new Kanye album, Toolbox Theory, or World War Three. Um, we got Donda. We even have a deluxe version, which we don't talk about that one. Um, and we now have Toolbox Theory. So I don't know what that says about World War Three, but you know, fingers crossed, it's not that bad. And. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I I think I've said this a couple times. I've been waiting for a TNO, a toolbox series, or a new TNO series to drop, or a, a new TNO sub mod to drop before I do more series. And well, I I recorded Nova Sabirs, which is gonna be uploading around the time this is. And uh, well, toolbox series out right now, so it's time to hop into the normal game. So. Um, I'm here for my Twitch chat. Who we hopping in as? We'll get that out in a second, man. Our impatience. And then Paradox said we work with some larger mods so we can have a bit of a rank startup to the mod. Can't imagine we'll be done sooner. I think Kaiserreich has that relationship with him already, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I might be a little bit, but I think Kaiserreich has had a decent relationship with the dev team in that sense. But, I might be wrong about that. But, all I know is that um, it's a new day. Is this a new... Well, this is a new image, obviously. We got, um... That going. Um, I'm not quite sure. Uh, but... We're going to be, uh, hopping in... Into a nation that I actually tried playing before... When it first got content, but I... Just didn't really quite finish it. I don't even know why I didn't upload it. I just deleted the parts one day. Never got to finishing it. And I ended up doing uh, another country uh, YouTube series focused on a, a series focused on that that content when it dropped instead. But we're going to be hopping in. And Manorama, I think you're going to enjoy this. The Republic of Ireland. <clears throat> Ireland's entry into the Second World War ensured its territorial unification. But it came at a cost. Throughout the 1950s, Ireland attached itself ever closer to a seemingly prosperous German Reich, adopting its military as a model, and its companies as a source of revenue. This close attachment has meant that Ireland went down with a sinking ship that was the German economy. While extremism on both sides of the aisle rose since the crash, Eamon de Valera's successor, Sean Lamas, took the necessary steps to protect Irish economy and independence at a great expense of its individual freedoms. Already, I can actually scroll with my mouse wheel with this, so this is, I'm already fucking enjoying this update because of that. Meanwhile, Ireland's northern counties, ruled by Neil Blaney, appeal, appears more unstable by the day, and its mismanagement could well prove to be the final nail in democracy's coffin. It was its fucking car bomb time. Exactly, man, or I'm, you know it. So, um... Well, yeah, I know Dino didn't support achievements, so there's no reason to do Iron Man. I'm, I am kind of curious back. Did they add any... I think this might just be the old mod, if I'm not mistaken. Although, it looks like we have full stuff to strengthen those guys. Drop music. Ooh, that's a nice little additional feature. Ooh. I think we'll leave this on in case World War Three happens. Oh, right. And Burgundy can collapse, so this is going to be really interesting. The Burgundian Order State will collapse in 1970, 50% of the time. Ooh. Right, I read about that. That's interesting as hell. Well, I'm curious how this is going to factor in. Um, I do think I have the, uh, sub-mod enabled with the country path, so I'm a little worried that might cause some conflicts, but we'll wait and see what will happen there. I think it only has a few... Oh, they have some new tags there. That's neat. They have this tag, too. I remember seeing that when I had the other mod. Can we enable Tabby for the meme? You know what?
if he can win in Comey, we will, if Comey can win, he will endure. How about that? Uh, you know what, fuck it, we're going to strengthen the shit out, Comey. Why not? For the meme. Let's go and start it up. If the Irish rush have leaked copious amounts of shit. <laughs> oh, you shouldn't have said that before I did that, man, or I'm, I'm sorry. But you're locked in now. You're locked in now. Oh man, I am, I'm excited. I really am. I've been waiting for this to happen for a while, I think I said already. I said it to someone already. I'm not quite sure who, but I, I've said it before. And I'll say it again. This is, um, maybe one of my most anticipated releases of the year. Along with, like, Donda, the Mass Effect Remaster. Um, I don't know what else I've been looking forward to. Just like shit like that. This was up there with everything I've been looking forward to this year. And it's finally here and I'm very happy about that. <clears throat> the 20th century opened in dark time for the people of Ireland. Subjugated as a war by their overlords in London. But circumstances and stubbornness allowed the Irish to have a state of their own once more. For time being it seemed as though peace would be the way of things between the English and their former subject. Then, the German rank attacked. Through Warsaw, Paris, and even London itself. Did the German boots march? And Eamon de Valera, Prime Minister, leader of the Fianna Fáil, and the Irish hero was faced with the choice of siding for doomed power or making the Republic's place in the New World assured through blood. Okay, I can't scroll through this. That's kind of annoying. I'm a mouse. You take what you get. The de Valera administration authorized the Irish invasion with German assistance of a region known as Northern Ireland, the only part of the Emerald Isle kept under British rule. On the back of a successful, albeit bloody, and long campaign, Fianna Fáil hadn't merely come to dominate Irish politics over the past decade, and has effectively become the sole ruling party. Fine Gael has withered on the vine, while the socialist Sinn Féin was banned outright. Yet not everyone is content with the state of affairs, especially Irish membership in the German-dominated Einheitspakt. Following the withdrawal of the German garrisons from the north at the time of the West Russian War, Control over the northern countries became increasingly difficult, necessitating the appointment of Neil Blaney as Minister for the Northern Countries. Counties, excuse me. Though methods on through methods unknown to much of the government, he has maintained the boiling pot that is a region under control. FF dominance waned during much less times of the fifties, and whilst De Valera is well liked by the average Irishman, there were many who began to tire of his role, as once small mistakes began to pile up slowly but surely. Thus, when Sean Lamas suggested that De Valera take the most ceremonial position of the presidency, where he could retain influence still, it was a trivial issue for the old man to accept, though he cautioned Lamas not to coalition with labor. It must have come as an unpleasant surprise to the elderly revolutionary when the new prime minister did exactly that and formed the current government as a FF labor coalition, with De Valera powerless to stop it. And in the midst of a disagreement, Fina Fail has started to show even more vulnerability than before. Now, after disproportionately narrow victim of 61 elections, three factions of Fianna Fáil stand to contest the party's future. But De Valera's supporters of a conservative guard and Lamas's support base, the hardliners of the aforementioned Neil Blaney, Catholic supremacists who are disliked fervently by the North, and Jack Lynch's awkwardly named liberals, who despite having little in common with the ideology, are nonetheless the most reform-minded of Fianna Fáil. With these factions splat... While these factions spatter over mundane politics, the situation in northern counties, the largely Protestant former British territories continue to degrade. Few have taken well to Neil Blaney's governance, and reform terrorism is rife from Ulster to Derry. Three factions continue to gather er, strength under the nose of the Dublin. The news among these is the Irish Citizens Guard, a secret splinter group of the IRA, which is known to be aligned with the interests of Germany. There's also the Irish Republican Army, an alliance of Irish nationals and socialist groups opposed to German interference and led by Seamus Tomey. Finally, there's the Ulster Volunteer Force, a force opposed equally to it, the Irish and German rule, led by the popular Presbyterian preacher Ian Paisley. In 1962, Ireland has a feature 
uncertain set before it, one can say it has two versions for the future. Fina Fale's vision of a status quo and stability, or the vision of change of Fine Gael. Only good governance and luck can save a nation so economically dominated by the interests of the Reich and so politically torn on the inside. But perhaps the world will find a way to bring this about. So we can manage Fina Fale's internal failures through all means possible to avoid internal instability or finally bring change to the country's political life. We can lift Ireland out of poverty without running out of budget and the investors' trust and handle the ticking time bomb in Northern Ireland as wisely as we can. Erin Gobra! Destiny lies ahead. There we go. I'm gonna love all your mispronunciations. I apologize ahead of time, Manorheim. And to any other Irishmen and women who are watching, um... I'm a dumb fucking American. I don't know how to pronounce any of this shit, so you're just gonna have to bear with me. Thatcher comes into power. Well, you know what to do. Only need to get one lucky once. True. Very, very true. Um, so let's go ahead. We don't really need to do much in research. Let's focus on our industry, I think. And uh, we got new research. Okay. Oh, God. What does all this mean? Holy shit. Um... Jesus, fuck. I'm already confused. Let's go. Okay. Let's do... Let's do hospital construction. Why not? Um... So, let's take a look. Oh, God. I'm, I'm already confused. Holy shit. Oh, man. Finaforil. Finaforil? Is that how you say it? Alright, so I'm looking at this. Military policies. Okay, this is a, just a nice overall over generally. Close enough? Okay. We'll go with it. Okay. Okay. Interesting. So we sort of have the same old societal development thing, but... Not quite as it was before. Subject rule, we have the North... Northern County Special Zone. Okay, let's go ahead and check out what we got. We got our leader, Sean Francis Lamast. To say that he loves Ireland is an understatement. Since rising against the British in 1916, he's been present ensuring a safe and prosperous future for the country. The ultimate recognition for services was Eamon de Valera's endorsement for the... for... Oh god, um... I'll just say Prime Minister for now. Upon his retirement from the post, thus Lamas was thrust into the forefront of Irish politics, only to discover the dreadful state of the country. Shortly after taking office, he was faced with economic meltdown, rebelling in the northern counties and the shaky nature of his position. Legacy of his role in convincing Dave Valera to join the Germans during the attack on Northern Ireland haunts him as he watches Ira become more dependent on Berlin by the day. Every hour he spends as Prime Minister, Lamas grows more convinced he can do little more than slowly impend and collapse of his own administration. In spite of his general pessimism, Lamas has held on, and has, to his credit, managed to maintain Ireland's territorial integrity secured and its political system unchanged. Ultimately, however, Lamas's silent achievements will count for little if he cannot save the country from, its, from itself. While the difficulty of his job increases in proportion to the power of opposition Fine Gael and to the number of terror attacks in the northern countries, it's not an impossible task. If Lamas proves to, able to carry it out, Lamas will stand on the pantheon of Ireland's founding fathers. Should he fail, he shall be its undertaker. I'm watching this on the toilet taking a poo. Oh, nice to hear, War Criminal. What mod is this? Uh, the New Order. The New Order. Um, so we got, uh, Sean Francis McEntee as the head of the, uh, government. Also, the sub-ideology is cool as hell. Authoritarian democracy, but it's dominant party democracy. A little different, but very interesting nonetheless. Man. So we have Sean Francis McEntee, of, uh, who is a dominant party de Democrat, trusty right-hand man, so a little bit of extra political power, which I imagine is going to be good. I don't know what we've done with political power, but I imagine it's going to be good. Sean McEntee, uh, head of government of the Republic of Ireland, 
has seen every moment of a young republic's history. Here he was in the general post office, fighting off the British in the East Rising. He was there as First Doyle, command did forces in Belfast in the War of Independence, and fought for De Valera in the Civil War. Ever since independence, he won, was won, he served faithfully in Finnefoil, loyally working in the government for the better part of three years, earning the reputation of an old legend in party debates. He's watched Ireland evolve as decades wore on, the Germans come and the British go. De Valera steps back, and Lamas has taken his place. Now in the 70s, McEntee's own retirement from the forefront of Irish politics government approaches, the time where he will be long content to observe the inner workings from his long-held TD seat. In the meantime, however, his loyal service has seen him elevate to the second highest position of Isle Ireland, subservient only to the Prime Minister himself. And with the storm clouds on the horizon for Europe and Ireland, this may be his most critical moment yet. Holy shit, you actually said Doyle spot on. Holy shit, let's go! I'll take it. Next we have Francis Thomas Aiken, Frank Aiken, Aiken Aiken, I'm not quite sure, prestigious commander in both the Revolutionary and Civil Wars, is one of the most famous names in the Ireland today. I haven't heard of him, but I'll take your word for it. He has witnessed the rise of Fianna Foyle in full, being there at its very inception, and he has proudly stood at Eamon de Valera's right hand for half a century since. His most famous work, however, sprang from the very same military reputation he garnered years before. Eamon de Valera, in choosing his Minister of Defense, chose Aiken to fill the role. It would prove to be a fateful choice. Aiken's insistence on Ireland's militarization in the outset of the Second World War left it prepared for when Germany came knocking. It made sweeping into Ulster a breeze when he faced against the meager British garrison left behind. The cost, of course, was shaking hands with the devil known as the Reich. Though Aiken's actions directly lid led to the situation of heavy German influence seen today, he is no fan of Hitler. Together, plans for dreams of Lamas of a future where Ireland's free of her Nazi allies. After that, we got Jack Lynch, liberal conservatism. What is he? He's still dominant part of democracy. Jack Lynch, liberal conservatism. How does one begin to describe him? The liberal dynamo of Finna Foyle, who has captured respect or even adoration to most everyone in Ireland. First, his career stands... No, not in politics, but instead in Gaelic games like Gaelic football and hurling, where he cemented himself immediately as an all-time great. After his sporting career came to a close, his political career blossomed, and he soon joined the Doyle, rising swiftly to become the youngest government minister in Irish history at the time, being only 39. Now in his 40s, Lynch's me meteoric rises, rise no sh shows no sign of stopping. His promotion to Minister of Industry and Commerce gives him wide control over the co economic direction of Ireland, which plans which he plans to take in a free trade direction, working well with the left-wing Labour Party to achieve his goals. His outspokenness and unusually high activity has earned him a reputation as an honest politician, perhaps the highest honor one can truly hold in such a business, and rumors already swore of him as a future successor to Lamas. If show party conservatives can sh only shiver at what the popular, Labour-friendly, decidedly unusual Lynch would do in the Prime Minister's seats. And then finally, we have Charles James Hoyley. Of all the members of the government today, aristocratic conservatism. Okay, we had a lot of fucking sub ideologies, which is cool. Bro, stop ridding and start nuking people. Do you know who I am? Do you know what TNO is? It's a fucking visual novel in a Hoi 4 mod. There's a lot of reading. Of all the members of the government today, Charles Holy's career is the shortest, and perhaps the most controversial already. A fierce conservative firebrand, pragmatic support of Ireland's close ties to Germany, if only for the economic benefit it brings, Holy has drawn admiration from those who support him and pure loathing from those who are opposed. There's no middle ground on the man in the mohair suit. Despite his short Doyle tenure, Holy was elected to become Sean Lamass's Minister of Justice at a record-setting age of 36. His marriage to Lamass's daughter couldn't have hurt, giving him control over Ireland's internal security forces. Since his appointment, Holly has used his newfound power to put down protests and IRA campaigns alike. However, Holly is an ambitious man, as ambitions do not stop at his current office. One day he envisions his right writing his populist oratory on top of Fianna Foyle, and then the Prime Minister's seat itself. From there, it will be Holly's prerogative to carve out a the position he feels Ireland must have and wants to prosper in the new order. Roll credits! Okay, so we'll go through the national spirits real quick. First off, there will be blood. Ominous. 
While Neil Blaney's rule in the northern countries has stabilized the situation and looked primed to explode only six years ago, there's an eerie feeling in the north. The fighting between the principal paramilitaries in the north, the Citizen Guard, Irish R the IRA, and the useful volunteer force have been escalating as of late, and Sean Lamas can see storm clouds gathering over Ulster, foreshadowing conflict that could determine the future of Ireland. He did say the thing. Let's go. Next, we have the humiliation of a giant. Oh, that's just not nice. Look at that pee pee head. E pee pee. Anyway, for most of Ireland's short history, the Fianna Foyle party has held control of Ireland with a fairly comfortable majority in the Doyle. Even as the political situation outside the party devolved into violence and clashes throughout the 50s, Dave Lair continued to hold on to power of tight media controls and centralizing powers around the. Chenair? Chenair? Not sure. However, nothing lasts forever, and a strong showing by Fine Gael has forced Fine Foyle out of majority. Also, the largest party, they are now struggling to get find a path forward to ensure their agenda can still get done. Next, so, not so much to gain, Mr. Hitler. People say that Ireland was on the winning side of the Second World War, but it doesn't feel like it in Ireland. The free world and the OFN want nothing to do with a pack nation, and to them, the island's essentially a non-entity. Having its economy tied to Germany has proved a disaster, with it being in stagnation since the German crash. And worst of all, it can't do anything about the situation. By joining the winning side of the war, Ireland has lost far more. Hmm. And finally, the little Wehrmacht. Which is just shit on shit on shit. The once efficient IDF lies in ruins. 20 years of German advisorship carried out by primary Schornerite officers. De Valera's policy of using inscription as an instrument for the reduction of employment and the enormous drain on resources created by the occupation bolster have conspired to create a miniature replica of the German army. Obscenely bloated, politically infiltrated, and dangerously inefficient best describe the sorry state of the Irish military. Although it certainly keeps unemployment down and German Germanophiles pleased. One day, however, this could, this could, one day come to back to acutely pain Ireland. It's a little repetitive. You don't need to say one day twice, but that's okay. So we're in the Inat spot. Uh, we got, we did a lot of a reading. I want to check the free production units because I don't know what the fuck this means. Let's check production. Oh dear God. What does this mean? <laughs> so we got one to cons consumer goods. Future military factories. Okay, so what do we got? Production units can be assigned to military production, can be divided into multiple less efficient workshops in order to easily balance out production lines. Such actions will double the amount of our military factories, but decrease the output by 50%. Hmm. Did TT just drop? It did just drop. Well, not just about a few hours ago, but... So now it's about Shaned. Okay, good to know. Um, I think we'll... Well, we don't have much military factory, so I think I'll go ahead and treat them like workshops then. Oh, Jesus. Well, okay, we got dockyards, refineries, and all this. We got... We need... Okay, it looks like we need more schools... We need more hospitals, we need more prisons, we need more army bases, and we're about, we're okay with administrative offices, but we still need more. Um, well shoot, what are we building? Um, let's build a school in Cork. Or you could if we, you know, we would if we could it seems. It looks like we can't though. And then we can do an, a hospital and let's say uh, Sligo. Kind of a uh, half an E, half an A kind of sound. Hmm. Man, Irish confuses me. Oh, okay. So we have it in tabs, not just a, a scroll down. Interesting. It confuses me too. Okay, because an English quote person, I'd rather be in Ireland than Tino England. Um, I get that. I get that. Hmm. Yeah, I can. I see the argument for that. Okay. Um, that one guy is not going to be happy because we have more fucking reading to do. It looks like the Northern Irish Constabulary is a government agency that specializes with policing the Northern Ireland. 
County Special Zone, officially the, a subdivision of Agarda. The NIC spends most of its time acting as the government's hand in dealing with a myriad peer military groups that infest the northern counties. The somewhat Sisyphean nature of a task appointed to the NIC has left the organization in a semi-permanent state of being understaffed and underfunded, leaving no love lost between the constabulary and the government to which it pledges its allegiance. Corruption is also rife within the organization as we must sometimes make the less than savory deals simply to survive. The NIC is the only force capable of stopping terrorism. If they are corrupt and weak, the terror attacks will keep coming. So the relationship is cordial. And they're a little corrupt, you know, a, a little bit corrupt. It doesn't sound like no collab government doesn't really have much of a grip in North England, so maybe I'd be okay. Maybe! I'd have to replay England in order to get a feel of that. And then we got paramilitaries. Dry! How are you? Welcome! Happy uh, toolbox drop day. Yes, it is, sir. Yes, it is. Ireland has had a tumultuous issue. History, one that has spawned ma many paramilitary and terrorist groups. The three main groups are the Ulster Volunteer Force, the IRA, and the ICG. The UVF is a pro British, pro unionist, anti revolving organization, which is a primary paramilitary for those who resist Irish occupation of Northern Ireland. The IRA is a radical leftist group whose main aim is to combat fascist and German influence in the country. The, IG, the ICG is a relatively new offshoot of the IRA. IRA. However, its age has not stopped it becoming one of the most violently active groups in the country. The more powerful the groups, more unstable our nation will be. Um, the UVF and the IRA are respecting a ceasefire right now, at least. The ICG are displeased, and they're all focused on the NIC, which is interesting. Uh, looks like we handle these with command power. Which is interesting. Okay. So right now, I don't think I want to fuck with the UVF or the IRA. Remember the promise? Sort of. Vaguely. I made a lot of promises. And I can't always keep track of them. Um, let's go ahead. Do some army stuff. Let's get uh, Carl O'Sullivan as a field marshal. And then Pat Quinlan. I think I, I think you do. I think you do because I don't fucking remember what you're talking about. And uh, the focus tree looks kind of familiar still. Hmm. Okay, let's do the shame of the giant. Eamon de Valera has long held a dream close to his heart. A dream of United Ireland, free from Anglo dominance. During World War II, the pr then Prime Minister accepted a deal with the devil to make his dream come true. Should the Republic of Ireland collaborate with the Nazi regime, the Germans would support them in an invasion of Ulster, which is just barely accomplished through the sheer amount of German manpower thrown at the Emerald Ireland Isle. Like all Faustian bargains, however, the price is rarely wor one worth paying. German megacorporations control vast sectors of the Irish economy, and countless paramilitaries in Ulster threaten total revolt against Dublin. Fianna Foyle only holds on to power through a ruthless political suppression, press censorship, and imprisoning those who speak too loudly against the regime. Faced with an increasing lack of confidence in Dave Valera's ability to govern, and Fianna Foyle's supermajority in the Doyle, Beginning to crumble, Sean Lamass, Dave Valera's chosen successor, kicked out, kicked the old man upstairs to the largely ceremonial presidency. Lamass has since tried to steer your island out of a nightmare that is Dave Valera's twisted dream. However, should Lamass prove inadequate to the task at hand, those around him can convince Dave Valera to use the one real power available to his office, the ability to appoint a new prime minister. Update some stuff like the ICG's new thing because Sao Ira's gone. These favorite names some of the terror groups. Okay. Because I remember... Because the ICG didn't seem familiar to me. The other two did, but not ICG. That's interesting. What is it? Did I say... Okay. I think I remember what I promised you, Dry. That clue was not helpful, but I think I remember what I promised you. And it's finally time to unpause. Let's go. Okay, so we can get some stuff. We need anti-tank equipment and support equipment. So anti-tank. 
in support equipment. Oh yeah, funny math, man. I figured. Um, I got a f ton of fucking series on my list, but Shafi will come soon. I can bring in the Germans to kick out the Brits. Yeah, I can see some issues with that. What's new in the TNO update? What fucking isn't? Um, um, there's a new economy system, at the very least. New construction system. It's not just civilian factories, it looks like. Um, schools and all this stuff. Uh, there's a Cold War GUI. Which is fucking fascinating to me, and I'm curious how it's gonna work. Now look at all of that. So we got spears. There are nukes. Uh, world tension. Looks like it's been changed to here. And then we got uh, great power rankings. The U.S. is winning. Germany's second. Japan is third. Um... Well, okay, just fucking boot up like that, sure. Oh my god, that was fucking amazing. That is cool as hell. Oh my god, I love that. Okay, oh, you can just pull that up any time and read. We got decisions, research. We got fucking this. Remember the gross realm, which is led by the greater German rank. We got a top 10 economy list. That's cool as hell. Um, a lot of shit here. Um, GDP. Um, economy lists. Mm -hmm. Jesus. Um... I don't want to mess too much with this. I think I'll up social spunt ending. A little bit of that. Man. I'll up money creation a little bit. God, what, what the fuck do I even do? Let's do fresh off the of pennies. We'll create a little bit of money. We'll get a bit of inflation going. So it does... Um, we'll go with that, I think. Or she being pretend economically fucking generous. Yeah, probably. Lane emergency, I think. Be oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. God, I mean, it, it, it's going to hurt us somehow. I just don't know what the, um, what the cut, cut off is going to be. Then we have all the economic warning signs. Oh, Jesus Christ. This is cool. We got an uh, intelligence agency, obviously. Um, we'll hold off on creating that, though, I think. Okay, so let's take a w look at the world around us, because I know there have been some new updates. We sort of saw a few of them when I put on the, uh, the mod that removes Atlantropa. But that was kind of glitchy, so I had to take that down. Um, the, uh, Stan country, Central Asia, looks different. Got a bunch of different... Oh, what is it? Oh, that's just a Cold War goo gooey, right. Um. Got updates on all of this. Um, Pakistan is kind of falling apart. Um, this has come out right. That has come out as well, right? Um, there's just sort of anarchy here. I think that's eventually... Ooh.
Well, that's cool. That's gonna look- that's cool as hell, holy shit! Um... Looks like some new names. A Malaysia Crisis. Starts the game right off with that. Oh my god. Um, I know there's gonna be conflict here eventually. It sounds like there's gonna be a fight in Chile. I mean, they have like 80 fucking states. It looks like. Um, so yeah. Oh my god, this is cool as hell. I fucking love this. Is Gorky a little thicker? Looks like they adjusted the border. Uh, Vologda is dead. Or Kostroma's dead. Kostroma's dead. This is Vologda. Kostroma's dead, though. Done some state adjustments, it looks like. At least a little bit of state adjustments. And then... Turkey doesn't start off with Nat Pop anymore. Or not Nat Pop, uh, Ultra Nationalist. What ideology is Chile? Let me check. Pakistan is gone. Crab dance. A liberal democracy. Oh yeah, Mega Divine Mandate's gonna be cool. Um, this all is fucking amazing. I am... Whew. Anyhow, let's go ahead and get back to it. Sean Lamass found a lack of an official residence for the Prime Minister, one of the most irritating quirks endemic to Irish politics. While even the Bulgarian monarch, his only independent counterpart at the Union Pack meeting, could boast of a palace, he was stuck in a doubling apartment. There is at least one advantage of the housing situation, his son Noel. The poor bugger actually lived in the building and carried out much of the same tasks as Czar Boris, his servants. Whenever Lamass came home, he could just find his dinner served and plates cooked clean. Today, the meal wouldn't just be for him, but for Chow was holy, too. While Lamas hoped the night's discussion would not stray far from Noel's soup, he had to feed his own expectations by veering into the Northern County situation while explaining the difference between stews in both parts of countries. <sighs> Blaney! Lamas's English had acquired a brewery accent. And, uh, Mannerheim, I'm gonna apologize in advance for this accent. If not for him and his, uh, what do you call them? Blaney boys, yes! Another sip of beer raised for Tao's the Prime Minister's throat. Everything would be fine after 61. But he had to insist on that fucking cabinet post. The liberals too, you know. They up ruin everything as well. The master's accusatory finger pointed vaguely in the direction of his son. No, don't ever forget. Giving in to your enemies is a mistake. I allowed those pain in the ass cosmopolitans, Lynch and Korish, to cook up a deal with the liberals. And look where it's gotten me. Now I have to bend over backwards every time I want to pass a goddamn bill. It hurts already, I'm sorry. <laughs> Holy was already in the process of interjecting with a depreciatory remark about the city of Fine Gael, but it didn't get far before Lamas started up again. You know, Charles, you're like a son to me. Apart from this boy here, you, you're the only man I can trust. I rely on you to save his party. No, this country. While his 34-year-old son made a muttered protest against the description as a boy, Charles Holly quietly cringed, as long with Myrland <laughs> and the old chat, it looks like. The old man knew what was really going on. Or maybe he did. So, fun fact. We have, um... We have made it seven days, and we have already run out of time in this episode. That goes in f to fucking show you. Um... How much I'm actually capable of uh, staying on track with this new update so far. Um, so, I'm going to be out to real quick for you two people because this is the first part. Uh, thank you as always for watching. If you liked this video, leave a like. If not, feel free to dislike. If you want to see more content like this in the future, hit the sub button for more uploads every weekday. As well as occasionally Saturdays. If you have any comments, feedback, concern, and you can sort of leave in the comment section below. I really love comments to get. Appreciate any love you pick my app for me. If you want to uh, chat or play games, I have a Discord. If you want to send me bucks money every month, like Patreon. If you want to see me do sort of life life for Twitch, I'll put your down description box below. But that's really it for now, ladies and gentlemen. My name has been Dogboat333. I thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.